Louise again. I'm back for another pour. And uh, I want to thank everybody again for stopping by. I think I mentioned this in one of the videos recently. I really, really appreciate you guys subscribing to me. It validates me. Um, and I'm, I gladly share my learnings with you guys. Um, this is fairly new to me. I really only started last March, March of 21. So I'm learning as we go. And uh, what I've got planned for today, an idea, is to continue along with the swiping uh, journey that I've been on. And I'm gonna try to create another landscape look. Um, so my lineup for today, this is the, uh, the team. This is my core squad. <laughs> I often use references to team just because I played sports a lot. So anyway, there you go. Um, been athletic back in the day. A lot of the same colors I had on the very last pour. Um, this is golden iridescent silver. This is golden uh, burnt sienna. Golden is carbon black. Golden is iridescent gold. Golden pearl. Iridescent pearl. And then this is a, a blue that I've had sitting around that I wanted to try out in a landscape, either for a sky or for water. Uh, it's Arteza's sky blue and glacier blue and they're both pearls and then also deco arts um, peacock pearl and then here i have my what i'm going to use in my base today now this is the same gray i used last time only this time i added more liquitex white to it and i also added some uh, sergeant's pearlescence to it and I apologize for all the noise because the next door neighbor behind me is redoing their awning on the back porch. So you're gonna hear some noise. So it's Sergeant's Pearlescence. Let me go get it. So I'll be honest with you, I bought this when I had not a clue what I was doing. I saw Mina Villegas use this in the first pour I ever saw anyone do. So I thought, well, if it's good enough for Mina, I'm gonna get it along with Floetrol and Liquitex pouring meeting and blah, blah, blah. Uh, but I have a lot in here. I have hardly used any, so I put a good chunk in here just to pearl this up a little bit since a lot of these are iridescents and pearl colors. This is pearl color. So that's the lineup for today. We'll see how it goes. I think I learned a lot from the last uh, painting that I did, which is this one. This one will be along the same vein as the first one. I did research on horizon lines, perspective, and vanishing points to give me a little better insight as to how to create a landscape. And I'll be completely honest with you guys, I, uh, I'm not an artist by trade by any means. I went to West Point, <laughs> I was in the military. But when I was little, I used to love to draw. I used to love to draw houses and landscapes and trees and profiles to no avail. I mean, there was really nothing. It was just for fun. So maybe I'm getting back to my roots as I start learning more and more about this acrylic paint pouring. So with that, let me uh, get the canvas flooded and let's get started. All right, everybody, I'm back. And unfortunately, I've got a lot of noise behind me. As you can hear, I've got the kids to my left, construction to my back. Here I am back in the middle with you. Oh my gosh. So I'm gonna have to voice over most of this. So anyway, the intention here is to do landscape. Um, one of the things that I did do was uh, pull up some old, old photographs of uh, the Grand Canyon to help me with perspective. So I'm gonna probably start my line a little higher than I had the last time. So I have more foreground to play in and we'll see what we get. Okay, so. Here we go. Yep, so I'm gonna voice over here and just go over things as things come up. Basically here, laying down the carbon black and then the burnt sienna. And now I've got the iridescent gold. Followed up with the silver, which in hindsight, I probably didn't even need the silver since I've got a basically a gray background. 
and then I have the blue. And I added the blue this time because I wanted to see if I can have some sort of uh, sky or even water. So sky in the upper part of the painting or water in the lower part. Now off to the left here, I'm sp uh, spraying the paper towel. So if you see me going off to the left, that's what I'm doing. And here's my first big swipe. And then once I get done with the first, once I get done with the first swipe here, I'm just going to reuse the paper towel and go in the other direction. And then I'm going to do this for the next couple times on both the left and right side. Now I'm noticing here that the blue I laid down is all but disappeared. And I'm pointing out also that I plan on putting another swipe in the uh, foreground on my side to see what happens to make it a little different than the last one. So besides applying my learnings from perspective and things on the foreground on this one, I'm also going to add, at this point I'm thinking at least a couple swipes, but it turns out to be one swipe on my right side. So all I'm doing here on the center line is just adding a little more color. I'm trying to brighten it up a little bit with the blue and the pearl. And now I'm going to go back with the black. And back to swiping again. So here I'm just assessing where I am and, uh, you know, decide I'm going to keep playing around with the swipes until I get what I think is a good starting point to embellish this painting. You know, now that I watch this back, I wished I'd flipped the canvas around and worked on the side that's closest to you guys and made that my foreground. 
and left what's closest to me is my sky because the darker side more naturally would be landscape and the lighter side would be the sky. So what I'm doing is just preparing a business card with some black paint to more define the uh, horizon line. And that's all carbon black I'm putting on the edge of that card. So in a second, I show you my business card that I use to make the horizon. That's back from my real estate days where I dabbled a little bit, made a few sales in real estate in the year and a half I was in. But I've since stopped because we're going to be moving to North Carolina in a few months. And I decided it's not worth putting any more time and effort into a business that I'm really not going to need and I'm going to abandon here soon. It was fun while it lasted, but a lot harder than I thought. And there, as I was gesturing my hands around, I was pointing out that I was planning on putting uh, swipes on the left and right side in the foreground toward me, but we'll see what happens. So here I am laying down another swipe and my intention here is to have like a a pillar in the foreground or like a small mountain and I have a clear idea of how I want to do it in my mind but of course trying to translate that into fluid art is a whole different story. So I do build this swipe here and then I do struggle with this and play with it for a little while. In the end, it turned out pretty good. On this painting, I do spend a lot of time just looking at it, stepping back, coming forward, looking at it again to try to figure out what I'm going to do. When you see me rocking back and forth there, it's basically I'm thinking. So I'm going to skip through a lot of the thinking part and show you more of the action. But there is probably about 30 minutes of just staring at this thing, trying to figure out what I'm going to do. And I'm just trying in my head to come up with a game plan on how I'm going to draw my lines, how I'm going to simulate a, a shelf of the uh, terrain. So there's just a lot of thinking going on. And you don't see this, but in front of me, behind your the camera here, I've got two pictures of the Grand Canyon um, taped to the wall that I'm referring to and looking at and studying. And how I'm trying to figure out how is the perspective from the closest part of the photograph to the farthest part. It really is a lot harder than it looks. And with that little swipe here, I'm just trying to build the top, the plateau of this shelf, this terrain feature that's just kind of a cliff there. I'm trying to figure out how to do this.
So here I'm actually pulling out one of the old uh, plexiglass pieces to swipe with. And, eh, it didn't really do a whole lot for me. That little skewer I have is really working nicely, but the plexiglass didn't quite do it. I did use it later on in the uh, in that little embellished shelf I made, and it does help there, but anyway, you'll see. So here in a second, I start building out the foreground where the artist or the person is standing on the ledge looking out toward the picture, the painting. And so I have like a shelf that I build for my point of view as I'm looking out toward my landscape in front of me. So it takes me a little while to build this section out, but I do it little bits at a time. And then I notice here, up at the top, where the horizon is, the swipes seem to be going askew. 
And I think what happened is because this is a pour over canvas, a couple times poured over, there's extra weight on, on the actual canvas itself. And the weight of the new paint is now weighing down the canvas. So it's starting to pool and making my swipe move, which is just, I guess, a hazard of the situation given I'm doing a resurfaced canvas. But it is what it is. I keep going. All I'm doing here is adding little underpinnings of the sh imaginary shelves that are there. So I'm just adding a little white definition to bring out the level of the plateau shelf. And uh, I've done that in a few spots so far.
But I think here I'm getting near the end as I'm starting to clean up my edges. And that little spot at the top that is pooling is really bugging me, but I can't fix it. So we'll see how it dries. I'm going to prop something up underneath it as it starts to dry. So this one took me a while, probably over, definitely over an hour, probably an hour and a half. Can't believe it stayed wet all this time. So anyway, I'm showing you the final result. And uh, obviously I'm getting near the end here with a little torch, get out any last minute bubbles and then call it a wrap. So anyway, once again, thanks for hanging in there. I know this was a little longer video than before. I appreciate you guys stopping by and take care.